fights in Dota, team fighting in Dota, it's it transcends all the patches and all the metas. It's always a thing. I guess what you call a team fight is a big clash, usually three versus three or more heroes. Sometimes you have the whole five versus five and it's a 10 man big fight. And what you usually classify as team fight heroes, what makes a hero really good at team fighting, is this big contribution. Usually it's in the shape of AOE spells. Warlock is a very typical example. He has this Fatal Bonds and Rock ability, which reigns supreme in these fights where he, get, he gets it off and, and he gets the value out of it. It can double the damage of any OE spell or beyond double it if you get the perfect Fatal Bonds and, and the spell lands on everybody. But Dota is not as simple as that. It is not that you just pick the team fight heroes and you then get the team fight. There's many factors to it. Uh, there's it's a huge depth in how you can view the team fight and what can be done different or what can be done better. I'm sitting with an example that one of my favorite games of all time. I, I'm so lucky that I got to play this game. And it's, uh, it's the game five of TI, where we were playing LGD. A game that starts out really rough. Um, we don't have the perfect team fight heroes here. We have, we have something that is really strong, but LGD kind of have something that's stronger. In, in mixture of Global Silence, Conquer Boat, Earth, Earthshaker with the Fisher and Echo, and Batrider being in a very rather good Batrider game. They, they give us a hard time. They give us a, a hard time from the very beginning. But what we then do afterwards is we kind of try to use all the tools that we're given and that we have from the beginning. And we've shifted into our favor. Something that you always want to note when you talk about Earthshakers, Silencers, Warlocks, their, their teamfight ability, their big abilities, they have a very long cooldown. And that's, that's already something to note. If, if, if you see them use it, or if you lose one fight where they then use the cooldown, you want to ask yourself, is it, is, it, is it a good time to go now? Is it because of the spell that they won the fight? Is it, is it going to be our fight now that they don't have it? This combined with many other things, like how, how how does the fight go down if one person dies first? Having Blink Daggers, Blink Dagger is a huge item in Dota and it's, it's something that is um, a very big deal. We see here in this fight as an example, Shaker has Dagger, he has Echo. He deals massive amount of AOE damage while, while getting the control. But they're missing their Terror Blade. We, we brought our numbers. We, we are missing the Zeus who can still contribute to the fight. There comes the Echo. But because Jarek stole the boat, the whole fight looks different. The echo doesn't, doesn't work nearly as well. People are still getting spells off. He has to invest the fissure in killing off the Rubik. Now he doesn't get to keep it for, for the Ember later. Um, and then again, because of the boat buff that we stole, Ana gets to survive and it becomes a huge turn for us. This is the first team fight that goes our way in this game. And it basically changes everything from here on out. It's not, we're not out of the woods at all. They still have an incredibly strong timing. They won the lanes and yeah, things are not really looking good yet, I would say. But big win for us. Another approach you can have to, to team fights in general is if it, if it looks too hard, if it looks too unrealistic or unfeasible that you're gonna win a fight, you can have, a, you can have an entirely different approach to the game altogether. Sometimes you have great tools, it can be the anti-mage who has battle fury and you're just killing wave after wave and all they do is run after you and a fight never happens or they never they never get to fight you. Another way is never taking the fair fights. Some lineups playing with Spectre or um, Tiny, these kind of heroes that have pickoff potential or they break your formation. Formation is something that's very, very important. It, it's important in all team fights. It's important in all aspects of Dota, um, but especially team fights. It's the whole thing of sticking your neck out, maybe getting one-shotted, getting formation or Having saving heroes. Saving heroes is also another big concept. A lot of heroes have a saving ability and, and if you have that, you can turn fights around very, very heavily. Uh, stop combos from happening. Many, many concepts, but try and, try and keep it simple. Formation, abilities, long cooldown abilities and play styles. Um, very fun, these are the very fundamental concepts that, uh, that can definitely help when it comes to um, yeah, seeing what else you can do if things aren't looking that easy. Taking another example from the, from the same game. Um, we have Ana, he's pushing our mid. Shaker with Blink Dagger is, uh, is happening. There's the global, but we managed to buy a Yule Scepter. 
This is another layer of Dota. Items help you fight. Items allow you to solve problems that you have. If Ember is getting silenced, well, there's a few items that he can buy. Yules is the most prominent one. And you already see what happened here. They've used Global, they've used Echo, and they've used Lasso. All to kill the Ember Spirit. That's a lot of investment. He ends up dying. Magnus ends up using the RP, also goes in, also ends up dying. Another, another trade that happens here is the Black King bar is being used. He was worried that the Fissure might happen together with Sue spells and he just dies. Another thing to note, a lot of things happening. We, we're in a very nice position of being able to slow down the game. We can even pause it here and we can, we can go over it in details. We could go over it for, for weeks on end. But something that, that also happens is they've, they've had a good start. They had a good laning phase and the Conquer opts for a tanking build. This is something that comes with a risk. If the game starts looking hard, these items fall off heavily. He's all, only soaking up more damage that we're dealing more damage with because we won the last fight or now the game is looking better for us. These items don't necessarily help him fight unless they're ahead. So all these things, they, they come into play in this game. We, we have the Terror Blade using that BKB right now. Like we talked about, the, uh, the Global was also being used, Lasso was used. And they feel like they have enough time to attempt a Roshan. Roshan is a very big objective that, if they get it, it's fantastic. It's, it's a really big problem for them if we get Aegis. Just for the way the lineups work, long cooldowns, if they use an Echo and a Lasso to kill an Ember again. Next time he's gonna have an Aegis and he's gonna spawn him. And it's, it's, it, it might look really bad for the fight. Roshan ends up not dying. They're getting really low. We need to, again, from LGD's perspective, think about it. Should they be here? Should they take the fight? Personal opinion, I think it's very risky. I think what they're doing is um, it's pretty hard. They do have a really nice observer ward here. It looks like a sentry, but that's a, that's a small replay bug. But they have some vision that makes them feel comfortable and confident in doing this, but still very risky. They, they do opt for, for healing up. Uh, now they're a bit slower, which is buying us time. It's also buying a bit of time for themselves. The echo was expended for for the profit kill just before, but we're getting the RP back up. We're getting the Sue Salty back up as well. And we're gonna see here what happens. They start getting poked. This is the objective that's forcing them to look at us. Ember is battling two heroes on the right. He has expended the Yules, but on the left, left side, the fight's going really well for us. The Shaker ends up getting picked off, and the Batrider. They both buy back here. Silencer dies third as a consequence. Uh, and there's no return as they just have to TP in. This is a very awkward position for LGD. If you just look at formation, this guy, he wants to be ready to connect with Fissure on top of other spells. Maybe T Terrorblade's hitting them as well. He's way down here. It just doesn't look like good formation, whereas we're, we're still happy with what's happening. Two guys just bought back and we're getting our big spell up that we, we're really looking at. This, this is our main team fight ability. Okay, let's see. We force the issue, we're going Roche. This is gonna force a fight. If they just leave it, they, then we get Aegis and, and happy days. So they feel like they have to do something about it. They're gonna go in, Ember gets caught, Lasso into Fisher. he has to buy back. We buy back on the Ember. This guy, still no, uh, no Metamorph. It's a huge impact for the fight. He's not a real threat at all. Um, Ember with the buyback comes back in, we're gonna clean up and we're gonna get the Roche as well. There's the RP, gets another core kill before the Sunder comes off. And the Conca ends up just tanking and dying, posing no threat. We get the Aegis now, we're super happy. This was not just a successful fight, but we're also thinking about the next fight. Um, if we, we, we have the feeling that it's gonna be so much easier than what we just pulled off. Everything is great. Uh, the tools that we use with the buyback, the, the fact that we push it to the limit where enemies don't have cooldown, we're playing in their face, they use their cooldowns, we're stronger than you, we're gonna go fight. These are all very powerful things and yeah, you can analyze forever and think about how small things can be done better. Like the items on Konka, like maybe healing up faster on LGD or again, we can turn it all around and just think about OG. What should OG have done better? How could they have done even better? What is it that they're doing that sets them up for, for great success? Um, now we obviously have a nature's profit. The fact that I'm pushing a side lane, it might make them TP there with one hero who's then not going to be there for the fight. And now it's, now it's not really a fair fight because they don't have Echo or they don't have Boat or something. 
So something that often ends up deciding the outcome of a fight is how the fight starts. The way a fight often starts is somebody gets jumped, somebody gets initiated or gone on, and the hero that gets jumped, he, he might die without getting a single spell out. This usually means bad news for the team who, who has that hero, who doesn't get a single spell. He contributes almost nothing to the fight other than soaking up damage. Um, we're going to see here an example of Anna playing in front. He's the guy with the Aegis and he's going to tank another set of abilities here. And by him doing this, he's opening the fight completely for the rest of us to look at what's happening. We, en we end up seeing Ahmed teleport behind us, which we punish really hard. Very great punish. The, the global silence came just too late. We might have been able to kill him anyways with the Greaves from Magnus. But the fact that Anna is giving so much vision on all these heroes, this helps the rest of us decide what we want to do with the fight. Do we want to go here? Do we have time to one-shot the Terrorblade? Where's the Kanka? Am I about to get... Am I about to die? Where's the Shaker? Am I about to get echoed? Here, it's an Ember doing it. It can be somebody else doing it. It can be you sacrificing your own life for the greater good. If you just want to help your Warlock get his Fatal Bonds off, if you want to help your carry get his BKB off, maybe there's a way for you to do it. It can be done through items. It can be done through you starting the fight can be done through you just giving the right vision, standing in the right place, making sure that you get jumped before he gets jumped. In essence, I think you just want to try and see the fight from different people's perspective, especially the hero who has a lot more fight impact. What is it that he wants to do? If he has enough fight impact, he might just win the fight on his own. And if you can help him, well, you win as a team and you lose as a team, so you're usually going to want to help your friends or your teammates. So something else that happened for, for TI-8 was we managed to use our buybacks really well. We, we often use them for our, our team fights or for these longer drawn out skirmishes that happen. Um, often you don't want to buy back unless something directly comes out of it positively. The, a very strong buyback is when you end up winning a fight or you win the fight and get the Roshan, get the Aegis or get the tower, get the barracks. This is a very optimal buyback. This is something that everybody should be happy to buy back for. Um, worst case scenario is you buy back, you end up not getting anything, or even worse, you end up dying again. Um, obviously, it comes with a risk, but you're always risking something when you, when you play Dota. You can always die, right? It's about playing with the belief that you, you're doing something good. Buyback got nerfed quite a bit after TI-8. Uh, I don't remember if it got nerfed one more time, but. It's not at all the same that it used to be. Now it's more punishing than ever. You have an added respawn time of a flat 20 seconds, I think it is. Maybe it's even 30. And uh, if, you, if you buy back and die now, it, it really hurts. But you'd still rather buy back to try and win than to not buy back and just accept the loss. So this game, we have a very good buyback hero. There's also items that really make you a good buyback hero, such as travel boots. You, you can instantly rejoin the fight. It almost gives you the Aegis factor of you die once, but you, you get back in there. Depending on how many spells they use to kill you, it might just win you the fight, the fact that you have that buyback. It's always good to think a few seconds before. Take those two or five seconds, depending on how long the game allows you to, to think whether or not you should buy back because it does cost you money and it does come with that risk. What happens if you die again? So to wrap up the subject about team fights. All I can really leave you with is try and look at it from different perspectives, try and stay open-minded and try and use the concepts that we talked about, see if they were all applied for the scenario that you want to you wanna get better at. Um, and definitely take advantage of the replay system that Dota offers. It's a rather fantastic spectator game and it really is very good for self-improvement. You really get the chance to look at it from different player perspectives directly, but also you get, to, you get to ponder with the thoughts for yourself. What would you have done in this position? What did they do that really messed you up? And you get the, you get the non-fog of war, war view of the fight. Um, this can definitely change everything for how you see it. And maybe you thought you were really, really great place at, at you were the right place at the right time. But once you see it in the replay, you realize, wow, uh, I might have ruined that fight or I might, might have made the fight really hard for us. But yeah, if, uh, if you guys are ever in questioning what went wrong in your game, what you can do better or what you can do different because 
OG, uh, we can just also look at this game and think, what can we do better? What can we do a little different? Use the replay system that Dota offers. It's a fantastic system. We can pause, we can wind down, you can even bind key binds to it. And you have these different grabs. It's not something that you really want to read into when you talk about team fights. They're an indicator of who might have an easier time fighting. But you really want to think of it in, in, in different terms, maybe even simpler terms. Did a hero get one-shotted? Was that a big deal? If it was, yeah, uh, maybe he shouldn't get one-shotted. Maybe we need to really help him not get one-shotted. Uh, maybe he needs to not stick his head out. Whatever it is that caused a problem or whatever problem that you solved, I mean, the replays, they tell the story and they, they can really help you. Um, also tell you about formation and, and item choices, like, or can give you the idea of what item could have done for you in this situation. Um, yeah, get familiar with it. Definitely one of my recommendations.